Sorry that we're a few minutes, uh, uh, a few weeks late for our April quarterly meeting, but better late than never. And um, I think we have a fairly full agenda tonight. There's a lot going on, and I hope most of it is good. Um, so um, the first item on the agenda is that we are, many of you know, I sent out an email to former to artists um, downtown with studios. We're talking about possibly doing an open studios this year. Um, the bid will be doing their annual harvest festival in October, either the third or fourth weekend. Do we know, Larry? It's uh, it's it's either the third or fourth weekend, as okay. far as we know right now. But uh, they're probably shooting for the third. Okay. The third weekend, which is a what is it? The twenty. The well, that's the, that, yeah, that's the third weekend, the 23rd, 24th? Of what month are we talking? October. Oh, October. October. Oh. And what's the big? I, never, I don't know who. The Business Improvement District. Ah. Oh. Oh. Who always step in and help us with our uh, open studios. Correct. Right. And since Larry is on both boards, he had the brilliant idea when the bid was talking about it oh, that if we coordinated efforts, um, we could take advantage of what they're spending on advertising and the crowds they're drawing um, and also do our own. So, so they're doing the Harvest Festival with music and all that, which brings in, you know, 500 to 700 people. A bit, I thought it was big. That's where I misunderstood big, of course. Yeah. Have they been doing this for a few years? Yes. yes, they have. Well, um, not last, not last year. year. Right, but they've done it and it's been a very nice event. Even the one that was in the rain um, right. worked out fine. So um, it takes a little bit of ingenuity in our, on our part um, because the venues that we would normally use for um, example, uh, off the beaten track, uh, Westchester Community College is not available, um, but Wilfredo Morell has offered us the use of his studio, uh, his gallery rather, as space. And I think we're planning to take him up on that um, and to see whether the adjacent space that used to be Nadine's studio, whether it's possible to, to use that as well, but we don't know the people who are renting it. But so that's 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 one show that I think we have a, a plan for. Um, I did a quick poll and at least a dozen of the artists with studios downtown said they'd be happy to open up their studios. Of course, with safety precautions, no, you know, we'll just have signs everywhere, no one admitted without a mask. Um, we'll have, you know, people will have to have hand sanitizer and we'll, decide whether we need them to show us their vaccination cards or how else we want to deal with it. I'm for that. <laughs> so I, I think um, the number who have responded positively gives us a kind of a critical mass. And if more people want to participate, that's great. And that leaves us with what to do about what was the truck. We obviously can't do the truck stop gallery. Um, first of all, we weren't going to do it last year for open studios for a lot of reasons, but the parking lot that's been used for the truck stop gallery is where the Harvest Festival has food vendors. Hmm. So there's that and then the artists and boutiques artists as, and well. as well. And so uh, we, we need to talk with the planning committee for the Harvest Festival and figure out what venues make sense for us to try to do a consolidated artisan's boutique truck stop gallery type of venue. What's, so that, that, date? That? <clears throat> What's that date, Robin, for the Harvest Festival? Um, Larry <laughs> thinks that it's probably, it's not firmed up yet. We're thinking October 23rd and 24th. As but opposed to Halloween. Been, yeah, it hasn't been finalized. Okay, thank you. And it needs to be finalized soon because <laughs> we have a lot of work to do to get ready for it. So I just, I guess, um, now that we have a, a group together, uh, I guess, what's the general, do people feel enthusiastic about this? Or are many of you interested in participating in one or another venue? Um, yeah. 
So do we want to um, do it as a round robin? What? Do we we can do a show of hands. I mean, I know who responded to my poll about opening their studios and many of you are here. Um, Is there chat? Usually we... Well, we don't have to. I mean, I know um, Larry is here and right. Richard and I'm looking through um, Will and Bob all and, and Linda Winters all said they'd like to open their studios in downtown, which would be great. Um, do we have a second page that I'm missing people on? Um, uh, we do have two pages. And Deb, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have a, a good number and a good cross section of artists whose studios would be open and more may materialize. And then I guess the question is we can do a show of hands for this of who might be interested in the off the beaten track or, or the um, artisan's boutique kind of thing. So what's, what the, what's the planned date for the open studio this year? That's what they said they don't know yet. We tentatively October 23rd. Oh, it's the same as the Harvest Festival. Okay. Correct. That's, oh yeah. Yes. I just wanted, uh, Larry? I just wanted, yeah, I just, Go ahead. I have a comment that I was at the, um, Cherry tree blossom, you know, down in Peaksville this past weekend, you know, walking around. And it was yes. a really good feeling to see people out in the community. And there were also artists, you know, displays, they rented the tables. And I think it's really great. It brings people together. We're coming out of the COVID, hopefully. And, and so, you know, whatever you guys decide to do, and I, I think, you know, if you have the open studio and off the beaten path, I think it's wonderful. Okay. I, I mean, I think people are hungry to, to do this, so. The, the problem is, where do those of us who don't have studios, who were either in the truck stop, show? And, and we're working on it as a committee. Right. We are working right. on it. We will, we will come up with a solution. But that, I mean, even if we just have a section, look, one of the things, and Jen, I know um, you, you were part of this as well, um, many of us have participated in the Harvest Festival as vendors in the past. And so even if we, the worst case scenario is that there's a separate section of the Harvest Festival that's PAA for tables, yes. right. we can make that work. Yeah. It can have its own vibe and, you know, um, signage and everything else. John. <laughs> Uh, just a quick question about the date. Larry, you said the third or fourth weekend in October. It's really the fourth, yeah. It's, 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 either, the, the it's either the 16th or 23rd. Okay, because you, you don't want to get involved with Halloween. Right. No, no we don't. Got it. So we don't. Think? And the, I think we're talking about, Larry, um, the Harvest Festival is only one day. That's correct. Hmm. Um, yeah. So it, it really depends on what venue we find to do the truck stop slash uh, boutique situation as to whether it's one or two days right. this time. Right. Well, it would be nice to have it two days. Is there some way of um, expanding it the second day or, you know, modifying it some, some way because we won't have the uh, Harvest Festival. Festival I at think, the same time. The, I think the it issue, really depends. There are the two issue parts is setting up and breaking down. If you're That's if you're problem. a vendor out on the street, then then you would be setting up and breaking down. That's really tough work. So it's if a we lot can't of work find, two days in a row. Right. If we can't find a venue that's that's safe and secure, yeah, or that or that we can in some way secure then it gets difficult for people to do two days. Do you think it would be possible if we do it for one day with the Harvest Festival having it longer hours? It would be longer hours if we're doing it with the Harvest Festival because the Harvest Festival goes from noon until 10 o'clock at night. Right. Yeah. How about and starting Seth a little goes earlier? around, excuse me? How about starting a little earlier? Um, no, that's not possible for the, for the vendors. 
Yeah, the yeah. logistics of closing off, of getting everyone to unload their stuff and close off the streets. Yes, um, yes. I mean, we generally have to be, I believe the street is closed. Now, the time actually, Larry, as I recall, was later. But I right. seem to remember that we had to be two. unloaded by 11, 11.30. Right. And that it didn't open until 2. Yeah, that's two. correct. In terms of logistics for all of those vendors to get all of their stuff unloaded. Um, yeah. So, and then it went till 10 o'clock at night. And because, you know, Sep and Brian's kind of, their specialty is lighting. Sep ran, went around and strung lights on everyone's booths once it got dark out which made a big difference. So- um, You have a studio in town, you could open early, you know, I don't think- that Absolutely. Would... Yeah. I think Absolutely. Do you want, do you want an think... indoor place? Or are you looking for like an indoor place? What about Scarlett Antonio space you used before? I think she's back using the space. Yes. I think that's not, we've done the Artisans Boutique there previously. We had, uh, that would not accommodate both the Artisans Boutique and the Truck Stop Gallery folks. Right. Um, and we'd like both, both venues to be able to show. So we still have, have some problem solving to do. Excuse Ocean, me, you were trying to get a, to turn get a word in. Audio. Whose dog is that? It's mine. I'll try to just I'm trying to you mute yourself so we don't have to just use mute that. if your dog is barking. Yeah, if you're wants not to talking, say something. if your dog is barking, mute. Yeah, unless you need to talk. Maybe he has an idea. <laughs> Go ahead, Ocean. <laughs> so, we can all mute until we talk. All right. So I having participated in both events, the open studios and the harvest festival, I think those events attract different um crowds yes. yes um the harvest festival is heavy in the music the beer yeah. um that kind of vibe um the arts the open studios obviously if it's built as open studios and advertised that way that attracts the art sort of crowd art appreciating crowd and art yeah. buying crowd yeah. um it's not to say that um, and I know Robin, you were there also at the Harvest Festival. It's not to say we didn't make sales. I made sales. I know Robin, you did. Um, but it's just, a, and it's only because I knew people here. I think people who knew me and knew my work came right. over and supported. Right. But I think we might run into a little bit of a challenge with um, getting, tapping into, into the, the, the type of people that we want to support our art. Um, not to say that anybody can't appreciate art or purchase, but it's just two completely different crowds. I, yes. I, I, I mean, we're going to advertise to the people that we normally advertise to as well. We're not relying just on the bids, you know, the Harvest Festival advertising. Right. I think part of the issue, Ocean, is that I don't think we have time right now. If you remember, we normally start in January to get ready for June open studios. There's a, a lot of lead time. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, and so we're, we're already the middle of May. We couldn't do anything before the fall, before October anyway. And then once you're past October, it's too cold out. Right, right. So I think this, is, this just presents itself. I don't think this is ideal but I think it's an opportunity. And I think also it's, it, again, it's a nice way that for the community to come together. And I think there are synergies between, between you know, music and art and, and the businesses in town and just, you know, everyone just kind of joining forces. There's a lot of pent up I'll, energy. Yeah. I'll yeah. say, I'll say one thing that from, about seven to ten at the um, at the peaks at the harvest festival is not by then everybody's full on the beer. I mean, right? <laughs> it's it's a different yes. vibe. It's not right. so in terms, of, in terms of open studios, maybe something to uh, twelve to six might be realistic. Something right. like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then you know, if you want to stay open, you stay open. But yeah, uh, well, I, I'm I not think, sure we could break down are right. booths. Right. It depends on where we are in relation to everyone else. 
right? Right. It, I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't working. want to be too far away though, because you want yeah. to. You want to if if peak skill is going to be full of people for that day. Right. Even if you're not all the people that would normally come to open studios, you want to be able to cash in on whoever is there. So you right. don't want to be right. off into another field. But um, following what Lolly was saying earlier with the vibe of people, I was at the, um, I did a show this past weekend at the walkway over the Hudson. They did, well, it was essentially like a street fair, but it was on the rail trail and it poured and people were out with umbrellas and rain jackets and hundreds and hundreds of people in the pouring rain. Because they were desperate to get, get out. out. Yeah. And do something. John. <laughs> Uh, I think that it's a positive thing to take advantage, even though Robin, as you mentioned, is not ideal, to keep the open studios name going. Uh, even if it's in October this year, hopefully it will be in June again, you know, after that. Yes. That's really good to keep us uh, in, the, in the limelight in people's minds as peak skill, having a yearly something for the arts. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think that's why we saw this as an opportunity um, and want to try to make it work. I think where they had, where they had us set up um, for the Harvest Fest was perfect location. I mean, we were right. central. We were on the street of Ford Piano and the chamber right. um, and everything was surrounded around that. Right. We could even hear, we could even hear the music and be entertained a little Absolutely. bit by that. Um, but the challenge, again, I hate to bring up the challenges, but I think it's important to um, pick apart is that with the indoor locations now, now I remember we had the, the large, the big format exhibition that Larry curated at mm -hmm. Ford Piano. Now that was also around a music type of venue. I can't remember what it was. Was it jazz music festival? It was yeah, called music festival, but there were, but, but it was difficult to get people to even come in, and we were there, and glass you could see through the side, there was glass, and it was still difficult to kind of get people in. People did come in, but still, many people just walked by and, and as if right. they were they didn't see what was going on. So, right. just something to think about because as I was thinking about indoor, have, have a hook. I thought I thought maybe uh, Louis Lanza's uh, the workers workers comp building where my exhibition is up um, in the windows. That's a potential location also. But you, we, and it's huge. And it's huge. Well, it's huge. Ocean, are you talking Look, about outside the advantage, or inside? Inside. inside. That's inside. a good idea. It's, it's the advantage of one of those of one of Louis's buildings is we don't have to break down Saturday night. Right. Where is that we located? could have it going on Sunday without anything else going on, so that people would be coming just for that. Mm. Right. Uh, Ocean, yeah, where is that located, of, that building? If most of the events are uh, going North on outside- On the corner of North Division and Maine. If most of the events are going on outside, though, I agree with what you said earlier. It's going to be very hard to get anyone to come inside, even the if- The art people will find the location. Yeah, if, but, if they came for the open studios, they're going to find the location. Right. If it's if it's a concentration of a lot of people, that's the whole thing. Is basically, you know, if we've got um, uh, twenty people that are in there, or even more, probably more like thirty people, that's going to be quite a pull as far yep. as energy. Yep. Well, let's think. Let's think about it. So we've had. Scarlet's Place, 925 South Street, as the Artisan's Boutique. Yes. Um, I exhibited, my first exhibit in Peak Skill seven years ago was at the Chamber of Commerce. That's yep. indoors. Yeah. Um, and then what other, and we have, um, there was a third indoor location. What was it? No, that was it. But even in those, and, and there was the big art show um, at Ford Piano. And all and three, WCC. Don't and, w, and, and WCC, but that's an exit, right, okay. Um, in all of those situations, I think that it's really been difficult for whatever reason for people to come in. Now, again, that's not saying that nobody came in, right. but the bulk of the people and the activity was outdoors. I think we benefited when we did the Harvest Festival because we were outside. We had vendors, we, right. had, our tent, we had our tents up, our 10 by 10s, and right. that, worked out, that worked out very nicely. Um, but again, the, the whole two day thing 
may not work in, um, if we do it that way. Right. Um, and we might split it. We might do outdoors on Saturday and indoors on Sunday. It really depends on what we see the options are. But, you know, Ocean, I've, I did the, the Artisan's Boutique and did well. I did better at the Artisan's Boutique than I did at the Harvest Festival. But I think, you know, Robin, it's, it's a little different comparing like craft. I mean, I love your work and it's art as well as craft and functional as well as sculptural. But for those who are just doing fine art, it's a, it's a harder sell, I think. Right, but most of those people don't do, um, they do off the beaten track or they open their studios. Right. It's also what is available. We can talk about what we want. Right. But let's be practical. We have to look and see what we can get. Yeah. Right. right. The other thing is, the other thing is, uh, we don't know what the. I know it's. They they said it's raining and the people, but it could be very cold on an October twenty fourth. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that that would be bring people inside more. And you see, one year, the last weekend in April, I did the only year I did the cherry blossom festival. It was freezing the end of April. So yeah. you just never know. You're right. <laughs> I remember the guitar store was a spot one year. Um, there were events in there. We um, did painting poetry, painting yeah, poetry. So I think nice we, spot. I think, um, I'm not sure how many other events we will do. Certainly, um, we will not be doing tours, um, okay. I think. I, want to know. I, th I Because I think that I mean, that's really up to the artists, but I have heard from some people that they're not comfortable with just tours coming through their I studio. Potential buyers is a different story. People coming specifically to look at their work, but having groups of people come in, I think is a little bit and I'm um, wondering, more yeah. invasive. I'm wondering also, and when they do come in, will we insist on distance between people? Yes, I think I think we need to have signage for all the appropriate social distancing, masks. Um, we'll check. We'll have disinfectant at the doors. We have to. We have to protect Everything ourselves. Everything depends on where COVID is right. at that point. All but even if, if we are if we are exactly where we are now, yeah. people have to wear masks and right. and you know and be careful. Yeah. Um, I don't want anyone getting sick because they opened their studio. Right. John? I just have one concern about considering two days if we're doing one of the days with the Harvest Festival. I'm just imagining that if the Harvest Festival is Saturday and we do something, let's say indoors or whatever on Sunday, I don't think the town will be alive the same way as it was on Saturday. So I'm not sure, just to think about it. Okay. Most of the people that I invite to open studios don't come to hear music. They come to look at art. Right. And right. so, you know, the people that we get who do show up for open studios may come on Sunday. It may be not as big a crowd as, as we're going to get from, from the the group that come for the music, but they are people who are interested in art. So those are the people we want to see. I mean, I think, um, look, we, the board is trying to figure out what the options are. Right. If there's anyone who wants to, you know, work with us on the, putting together the artisans boutique slash truck stop um, option, the more the merrier. Um, and I think that, um, I mean, I think Wilfredo's uh, generosity is very helpful to us for the off the beaten track. Right. Yeah, and I'll take back what I said about my concern. If Robin, you mentioned that maybe one day would be more outdoors and one day would be more indoors. It, mm -hmm. Jason, Sunday's the indoors. And what Larry was saying makes sense also, then it might be workable. Yeah. So, um, you know, Larry will be uh, meeting with the bid committee. And I guess we need to have some conversations with people like Louis Lanza. We do. <laughs> um, to figure out whether there are other options. 
since he owns everything. <laughs> yep. Actually, yeah. Will Wilfredo's studio be big enough for? for well, that's people? why we're trying to see if we can talk with the people who rented what used to be Nadine's gallery. Oh, I see. Um, we don't know them. Um, I have a, a call out to Wilfredo, assuming that he's at least met them and may be able to help us. So, you know, there's work. Will. Yeah, I think this year it's it's going to be sort of a semi-open studio in the sense the door is half open kind of thing. Um, and it, to go on a riff on a couple of other things that have been said, um, the word branding was used, and I think that's important. In other words, if we say that we are doing you know, a, an open studio effort, um, then we're still on people's calendars. I don't know that it's going to be a one calendar map fits all. It may just have to be individual arrangements and as can be. I don't know what kind of, you know, marketing or, or organization you could do ahead of that. Um, it might be up to, you know, all of us individually to say, you know, at least my studio will be open and some of the artists shown are, you know, A, B, and C. Um, and maybe we all kind of like divide and conquer, but I'll put it under the umbrella. Um, That's always been the case, Will. Yeah, I suppose. We, yeah, I mean, we, we will, as the PAA, we will try to have a map so that people who, you know, everyone's got their own mailing lists, but someone from Larry's mailing list may be interested in seeing Barbara Hertzfeld's work when they see her on the map. That's the advantage of us doing this as an organization, you know, that we, we share each other's information and we really try to um, get people to go to as many studios as they can. And, um, you know, everyone will be listed as these are the people opening their studios. These are the people in the off, off the beaten track show. Um, so that, um, we reinforce each other's advertising that way. So the yeah. off the beaten track, um, what that would look like is you provide your own table, your own tent, your own grid to hang your paintings or- No, uh, off the beaten track has always just been at, at WCC, just so we, it's been a show where people so, um, who don't have studios downtown show one or two pieces. Right, but not right? for this instance. Yes, right? so I mean, Wilfredo's gallery doesn't have enough room. Off the beaten track is still a gallery show. Okay. If you wanted to do it the way you would have done the truck stop, then yes, you'd have racks. And table and tent? <clears throat> um, I don't know if you also need a- uh, probably, probably you need a tent and racks if you okay, want. To, to if you want to try to do something like off the uh, like the truck stop, Got right? Yeah. To mimic what you would have done at the truck stop, then you need racks and a tent. So, Robin, unless we do it indoors somewhere, right? right. Then you still need racks. and maybe racks. Any not racks, but you know, a screen that you can hang on. Yes. Right. I mean, it's setting up a booth would be more like the artisan's boutique display than right. what we've done before, where we had we individually had a truck. On the other hand, if you don't have a downtown studio, what we're talking about is a chance for you to show a body of work. And I have to mute myself. Sorry, dogs. Robin? Yes. Um, I remember last winter before, when we were first starting to talk about the open studios before the world went to crap, um, we were talking about doing large tents with people underneath. Right. Whatever happened with that idea? Is that something that could be brought back as well? Um, it's location issues. Right. We don't right. have a parking lot. We don't have, at the moment, we don't know uh, an outdoor location that would be large enough for that. 
Um, right. Well, assuming that you find something, because if everybody's going to be bringing their own tent, you're going to have a large enough, you have to have a large enough space for that anyway, for right. individual tents. But so if you find a space outdoors that could be for individual tents, would you be re considering doing the larger tents for the people who don't own tents? Excuse me, who don't own tents? Um, I mean, I suspect we could talk about it, but I think that the large tent rentals are quite expensive. The other thing is the bid may be using it for their food vendors. Yeah, you know, the bid will use the one that. they have for the food vendors. Um, right, well, we had talked about getting smaller large tents that had like right. for two or three vendors underneath. And, you know, I mean, I think, I think, Jen, um, we need to evaluate what spaces are available. Okay. And what people have an interest in it. And then once we know who has an interest, we can have a, a meeting of that group and talk about and do maybe do some research on pricing for big tents versus smaller tents for people. Does that maybe, make sense? I think maybe, maybe we should send out an email to our members and ask people to mm. indicate what they would be interested in. Yeah. I can do that. I, I mean, I did something like that with the artists who opened their studios in the past. Well, that was so we could call it open studios. Right. But now we need to see how many people might want a vendor type space, whether it's whatever. Yes. It, and then what I will do, Joanne. What? Yeah, no, I think I think that makes sense. What we'll do is we're recording this meeting. I'll let people know that this meeting is available for them to listen to. And I will add to that kind of a poll. Please let me know whether you'd be interested in off the beaten track, you know, or being part of a tent show or an indoor show and um, no commitments at this point, just a poll. Um, Robin, I was wondering, you know, the, the space that uh, Ben Green was going to mm. Urbish or what all, um, would that be a, a place that we could actually use for? I don't think he's done enough work there for it to be usable. I don't think it has no, a certificate it, of occupancy or anything. It's nowhere near that. That's yeah. Not only that, it's really off the beaten track. Yeah. Yeah. We really want something that's within earshot of the of, of the festival, right? We, no, I think what Ocean brought up is that the best is the best option. We had, yeah, we had the craft show during open studios one year in front of the library. Now that's a hop, skip, and jump from downtown. No yeah. one came. No one, yeah. Really? I was part of that. Yeah. <clears throat> not a no. soul. Can I I want to ask? Richard. I'm a little I'm not, not clear. I, uh, <clears throat> Are we talking is that you have to have either off the beaten track or an open studio? Can't they be done simultaneously? No, it's not. Uh, um, people participate in one or the other. If you have a studio in downtown, that's where your work is showing. If you don't have a studio in downtown, yes. then you hang a piece at the off the beaten track show. If you choose to. Uh, but it's the, the same show. It's yes, the same the weekend, same it's the same advertising, same yes, weekend. but okay. we have over 200 members. <laughs> so um, the more that people, if people double up where they're showing, then that doesn't leave a lot of room for other people, right? We mm. want to make sure that the maximum number of people can participate in the weekend and show their work. And we have never allowed people who are opening their studios to show in, in WCC. Because it's it's expressly for people who don't have downtown studios. Right. And if we look at our membership, a large number of our members don't have downtown studios and who are active artists wanting to exhibit. Right. I mean, here I am, no downtown studio. I've been doing a truck for, for the past couple of years very happily. You can't hear me. me. <laughs> yes, with you. And and Bonnie, the what reason she's Bonnie? so happy is she's with Hillary. <laughs> I know. I I know. There's been some talk with the city, and as well, a little bit as part of this whole DRI um, initiative, downtown re revitalization initiative, um, with uh, regarding Pugsley Park. 
Um, <clears throat> now, I don't, I don't know if by October, you know, the city will give a permit or what their feelings will be about doing something there, but I know that they had discussed specifically uh, cultural events at uh, Pugsley Park. So, but again, that's outdoor space that will likely be a one day kind of thing, um, be, uh, you know, so, but it's an and option. it's far. It, well, it's downtown, isn't it? Well, oh, yeah, well, it's, it's, really. kind of, it's kind of far, but, yeah. <laughs> but I'm thinking the PAA open studios, I mean, in terms of, I mean, I think we could kind of be pioneers and, and, and if they're talking about using that as a cultural event space or venue, then that may be something that we might want to look into. Maybe not for open studios, but certainly down the line. If you've, if you've got 30 artists participating, yeah. that gives right. you a synergy, a kind of energy that would get people to move over there. I so, agree. you know, there, that's, that is a possibility if they, if they allow it. That's another question. We can even, we, there could even be music um, there while the exactly. artists are there and, and certainly- On the second day, on the second day. <laughs> on the second day, and certainly it can, right. it'll, bring, it'll bring people to a, a wider area um, of walking around and checking things out. But, Ray Blue is gonna be giving a series of concerts in the park this Pugsley? summer. Pugsley? At Pugsley. Who is it? Ray Blue. Ray Blue, great jazz sax player. Yeah. Really great guy. Where and is where is Pugsley Park? Yeah, across, the across from the health center. Yeah. Well, what about the health center? We we had a show there once, remember? What that was one? an exhibit. We had yeah, more than one show there, but that's not yeah, appropriate that's not for the artisans boutique and but for the uh, off the beaten track, maybe. It's restricted, it's small space. It's, small it's less, space. It's, it's not that much wall space. And right. since mm -hmm. Wilfredo manages that as well and it's not what he offered me, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna push him on it. And Ford we piano is out of the- Park, out of, it would be nice. We don't know about Ford. I mean, I we think it's know. worth asking Louis about the Ford building or about the workman's comp building. Yeah, uh, you know, Ocean, maybe you and I can work on him a little bit. I, I'll work him through the bid, you know, and see. It's it's possible. Okay. I just fear, especially that um, workers' comp building. I mean, I know I mentioned it, but now I'm thinking about it. The the layout, I mean, it's just right. trying to get people in there, just around that corner. Some people, I've seen people just walk by complete. It's just, I don't know. You know, I, I, you know what we would need? We would need gigantic banners. And I know somebody who does things like that. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> what if it's restrooms? What if you are an issue? One of the on a map. Would it be possible for the Paramount? Because they're opening up a show in October. I saw advertised. So is it possible to have some, you know, art pieces displayed? At this there? point, they don't have any gallery space. It's really I mean, we, we've struggled with the Paramount showing art at the Paramount yeah. because of their And I think gallery. that very or soon they're going to be doing a lot of work there. Yeah. So what, what uh, about Hudson Valley Mocha? Is that too I far? About are the, you joking? Talk about far. You yeah. talk, are you joking? No, no. <laughs> but uh, you were talking are about WC. I am serious. No, I'm not. No. Oh, well, they, <laughs> that that wouldn't be appropriate. Okay. They have it's their own shows for either okay. them or us. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about because uh, I'm new to Peekskill? What about the Elks Club that supposedly has a banquet hall? It has quite a pricey rental. Ah. Uh, they wouldn't see this as one of a community effort because they they look to have lots of grants and stuff, supposedly. Not that that branch has done anything, but I'm just curious whether this, maybe it's a time for, to contribute. I, I don't know. It's such a great building on the outside. I just, just a thought. Well, I think we need a committee that's gonna go, yes. go and look for spaces for alternative spaces because we can, I did this with 
another organization when we lost our space due to COVID last year. And people came up with grand ideas that I was supposed to be looking for spaces for, me and, and one other person. And we spent hours talking about possibilities. We need to have a committee that is ready to go out and talk to people. Right. And see what is actually possible. Right. Um, because it, it just, I don't know. I just, I just have, have spent so much time doing that last year. And I spent a lot of time investigating different spaces and spending time looking for empty storefronts and all sorts of other things for alternative venues in Peekskill. And our track record has not been great. Right. So let's, let's focus, let's focus. Right. I think accessibility is an issue that we need to be mindful of also. Yes. Um, I love the, the Elks building too, but there are some steps there and even one step well, that, is too that's much. That's the problem with, with uh, Wilfredo's studio also. Yes. Um, but that would, yeah. I mean, that was one of the nice things when we did um, the Artisan's Boutique at Scarlet's because it was accessible. And when we did the truck stop, how many times did people not be able to go up the ramp? Yes. Right. So um, in any event, I think um, a committee of people, you know, con dealing with, uh, first of all, I'm going to try to get some assessment of how many people are interested. And then if there are people who want to work on this, um, then um, you'll let me know. Um, you know, some of us, some people have the, the existing relationships with owners to, to go talk to people um, and we'll try to figure it out. We will try to optimize what's not an ideal situation. I just wanted to I just throw something out and tell me that I'm crazy and go away. But like there's probably okay. a lot of people, <laughs> there might be people who like by my elevator, one of the elevators, there's a sign that says, you know, studio for rent kind of thing. Like, I just wonder whether there are people who don't have tenants in studios or, you know, or a storefront or something like that, that somebody has not been able to have a tenant in for like months and months and like COVID is like, you know, messing them up and maybe they'd rent us, um, a storefront or a studio somewhere in town for a weekend. I don't know, it's just a thought. The big spaces are owned by Louie. <laughs> King Louie, huh? It all comes yeah. down to Louie. Yep. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, you know, if you can't rent your storefront to anybody or you can't rent your studio to anybody, maybe you'd be happy to take, you know, a quarter of, the month's rent from a big group of people. Oh, there's know. always there's insurance issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Have to be I know. I know. And code I know. issues. I it was idea, but I just thought I should throw it out there. Okay, let's move on. So I think people feel good about trying to do this some version of open studios. Is that a fair representation of this mm -hmm. discussion? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so we will figure out, try to figure out in the next couple of weeks how to make that work and keep everybody post updated. Um, we are doing a series of other shows, um, which I think is kind of exciting that we, we're at this point where we can do that. You should have gotten today, I hope, um, an e-blast about uh, with a prospectus for a show in June at Westchester Community College. Um, that we are calling Re-Emergence. Hmm. And since it's our first live show back, and that will be, we, um, WCC reminded us that they still had their gallery available to us, the normal open studios time. And we couldn't get it together for a June 5th opening, but we're trying to do a show that will open on June 12th. So, um, if you haven't gotten that e-blast, I will double check my MailChimp and see what happened with that. Uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Flood is chairing that committee and um, 
we're hoping that people will be excited about participating. We've talked about the October Open Studios. Um, and the other thing is that WCC has also offered us their gallery for a show from November through December. Um, we're thinking of doing a theme of celebration since it's around Thanksgiving and the uh, Christmas, New Year's holidays. Um, and um, all of these shows would be lightly juried. Uh, and it may be, we have so many members at this point, you may only get one piece in if you apply, but um, hopefully we'll have a nice representation of people. When did you send that first one out? This no. afternoon. I, I didn't get I it. I haven't gotten I it. it. I got it. Maybe I didn't notice. You got it? I got it. Okay. Yep. I, got I got it. it. So if you got so e-blasts mm -hmm. often go into spam folders. I know that for me to see them, I have to go into all mail. I can't see it in my regular inbox. I got it. I didn't okay. it so it did go out. I didn't see it. Uh -huh. Are you putting it on Facebook as well? Um, yes, when Elisa has a chance to do it, she hadn't earlier today. It's also on the website and you can download the, um, the prospectus from the website as well. Okay. Um, I think now might be a good time. Karen, if you want to talk about it, Karen is like the one of us who got, did you go to that meeting, Larry? Ocean, no, you went also. I was teaching. Uh, Ocean was there. So he can Ocean was see there too. Was yeah, what's up? <laughs> you got it, you got it. <laughs> the uh, the lieutenant governor was was in town today at the Hudson Room with Louis um, and many other uh, dignitaries <laughs> announcing the um, the results of the DRI $10 million grant that came really? into Peak Skill that uh, a committee that Ocean served on uh, representing the artist community. Um, anyway, we've been waiting and waiting for this because of COVID, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, they announced the awards um, and it's on the governor's website. It's on a couple of other websites. I just got, somebody just sent me the press release for it. But, it was on channel 12 news tonight. Yeah, great. Um, and anyway, the, um, I'm trying to look for the uh, transform downtown peak skill with public art was the name of the proposal, 500,000. The total amount asked for was funded, so that's good. Great. And so yeah, that just means that there's a, a lot of work that will be involved with that. Right. <laughs> I have to say there were a couple of other projects that were funded that seem to cry out for artist involvement. So, you know, Larry, I think at the next board meeting, I'd like to bring that up and maybe talk about it. You know, they okay. did get, which they did not announce today, which was odd. Um, Ocean, they, they announced there were two projects that are funded according to the press release, but were not announced. One of them was the rebranding strategy for the city right. that um, I know Jean Friedman, the planner said she thought it was odd that, that didn't get funded. Well, it's on the press release, so I think it got funded. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think there are a couple of other areas where you know, we can stick our noses in nicely. What does that yeah, mean? just just so it's clear, um, that $500,000 is not our money. Um, that $500,000 is for three public art projects that were submitted. One was for us to do public art. And I think we were about a quarter of a million, uh, just under a quarter of a million. Yes, Larry, I don't remember. Um, one is for HB Mocha to do lighted sculptures throughout the city. And another was about, was a, a smaller grant that Christine, Dalton and Candace Winters were gonna do for um, murals down on the, on Requis Street at the, um, on the underpass walls there with high school students, I believe. Um, so, well, it'll be, yeah, it's with using, not necessarily high school students, but using students to help develop some of the collage materials. So there will be three projects. There will hopefully be lots of art throughout Peekskill. Um, well, also, also. And there will be opportunities for some of, in some of these projects to submit artwork for PA members. Um, what, what is rebranding? She mentioned rebranding. Karen used the word rebranding. I did, I'm trying to, I'd like to read it so it's, uh... It's PR for the city, right. basically. 
Yeah, there, there was also um, mention of the one point six million um, dollars that went that that was is funding the Peak Skill Arts Center. Actually, the first Peak Skill Arts Center. So that was approved as well. What? So what and, about a million dollars for the Paramount, right? And a million dollars for the Paramount. Okay. Um, so what arts also, center, what are you talking about with, with an art center? There um, will be an art center. Um, <clears throat> it will not necessarily be um, as originally envisioned, but there will be an art center in Peekskill. And that's, it's not uh, in our uh, purview to be able to talk about it at this point. <laughs> A project that was we're, we're not we're, we're not responsible for that project. That's the project that Ben Green is involved in. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. When okay. Ben is ready, more discussions will occur. I assume. Sure. And I imagine there'll be other opportunities for artists and possibly art with involving the youth, um, because the Boys and Girls Club is coming right. here to right. the Kylie Kylie Center. So, or they will merge or something. Um, but that was also a project that was funded um, that may require artist involvement <laughs> as well in terms of teaching and things like that. I think the, the rebranding, the, the way they describe it is develop a brand for peace skill that describes the city's history, culture, <laughs> creates a marketing strategy to communicate the city's brand and attract new residents, businesses, visitors, implement components of the marketing strategy with wayfinding signage. Mm -hmm. So, it'd be interesting to see what opportunities there are there. We've heard that before. You have, okay. <laughs> Wayfinding. <laughs> well, it was it was funded now, so it should become a reality soon. I think everyone in the city is um, uh, ready to go um, with this opportunity that was just announced today. So let's we'll see. That's very exciting. I, I had no idea. So I'm thrilled and Candace Winter will be thrilled too because we've just- Yeah, this was there. just announced today. Right. Mm -hmm. And what's great is that the, we did, I added them up Ocean and they do hit $10 million. Mm -hmm. I was concerned that they might've shorted us, <laughs> um, but they didn't. No, but we submitted, the consultant submitted about 12 million of our projects. 14, 14. we submitted 14. 14, okay. Million. Wow, well, we, we did well then. Yeah, really. Yeah, unfortunately, we have some fundraising to do, Larry. I yeah. know. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but there's also opportunity for um, community building. Um, yeah, absolutely. Around absolutely. all of this. And absolutely. certainly getting the PAA's name out and partnering, partnering with other people in the community will help the organization as a whole, will help artists as individuals, and will be a great thing for the community. Yep. You know, um, it's a shame we can't do something with the museum, the Lincoln Museum. Oh. Uh, you know, probably too complicated and- We, we will be. There, there will be components that, that'll, that'll, that'll integrate with the Lincoln Museum, the, the Lincoln Depot also. Part of part of the public art project runs past the 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 museums. We will we will involve them. There will be light sculptures down there. Yes. Nice. And and one of the sites for a set of banners is right next to the the Lincoln Depot. Right. So. Right. Okay. Very exciting. Very it's exciting. It's all very exciting. And we've been waiting for a long time to hear something. Right. Okay. My brain just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so from the sublime to the, re no. Um, we, I, I think the studio visits have been wonderful. Um, I've been really um, delighted to see different people's work and at the generosity of people, you know, hosting. And we now um, need volunteers for the next couple of months. I don't have anyone, I may have someone for July. I don't have anyone lined up for June. We're gonna take, we don't have, we may have someone July. I don't have, we're gonna take August off. Lawrence Flood will be doing it in September, but I do need someone for June and I will need people in the fall. And I think even once we're able to do things in person, 
Um, these studio visits are a really nice way to see each other's work um, and to learn more about each other. So if you've thought about volunteering and you would like to, um, I would love uh, for you to contact me. Hillary Hostetler will be hosting May 26th. I'm looking forward to that. Um, that one will be, we usually do them on Thursday, but the Wednesday worked better for um, Hillary. So that's what we're doing. And um, that's it for that. Um, somewhere I have a list. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit backward here. I'm gonna just tell you, we have a number of new members. Um, so I'm just gonna read you since our last quarterly meeting. Um, the people who have joined, I don't think, I think a couple of them were on this call. So Antonia Arts, which is uh, Karen, uh, Scarlett Antonia, Karen Nelson, Tim Gillen, Kelly Edwards, Nora Oresti, um, Mark Taverner, Alexander Lipowick, Sharon Simmons Wright, Michelle Squibb, and then we've got Karen Villarreal, who like joined and jumped in and helped with the show. Um, Barbara Corrine mm -hmm. and Michael Bongar are all new members who we welcome and um, are thrilled to have with us. And now I just turn it over to you guys to let me know. Um, yep. I also, did we? I'm not sure now um, whether at our last quarterly meeting we had a chance to introduce Joanne Zawalski as our newest board member. And I don't know if we did, but we are thrilled to have her on board. I had known I would have worn red. I didn't realize. I know. <laughs> red is, in case you don't know, Joanne's favorite color is red. Um, it's and, not Joanne because she's not wearing red. Right. <laughs> I have it's a, a Joanne imposter red, tonight. Red cologne. I, and, I just, like, if I could say something about the studio tours, Robin, one of the things we've been, I wanted to say with the, the plans for the open studio possibility in October, I mean, these studio tours, the we we do virtual studio tours, and if we we if we can, people will be interested in seeing the work just from the virtual tours. You know, just send out an e blast. We have we have virtual tours. Come see us in person. You know, they're they're fabulous. Um, I think I think the virtual tour automatically optimize. Is that you, Maureen? Oh, I'm sorry. You passing the train? Oh. <laughs> it's the train, it's not me. <laughs> that's, a, that's the beautiful sound of Peekskill. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, vir virtual tours are a wonderful way of advertising the open studios. You know, you just say, you wanna, wanna see my studio in person, just first see it in, as a virtual tour. You know, it's a wonderful advertising thing. I have to figure out how to use that, but I, I think that's an interesting hook. But so um, for anyone who doesn't know, what I've been able to do is um, upload the recordings of the studio visits to YouTube. And so we have a PAA channel on YouTube, but there's also a link on the PAA homepage to see studio tours. I didn't figure this out early enough for all of the studio tours we've had, but um, many of them were there. Um, Joanne did one in March, I think, and you'll get to see her. Um, who else is on here? Robin Arce did the one in April, I believe. What about Leslie? Leslie Rebe did one. I was talking about the ones who were on the call, but thank you. Um, Joanne Brody did one, I did one, Inez did, Inez did one, Deborah Beck did one. So um, they're really fun. They're f and everyone's is a little bit different and that's fine. You know, how you choose to share your art and talk about it and show people your studio is, is as individual as your work is. Um, Most of and the that's part of what's been really a, a fun experience. Most of the presentations are about 15 minutes. And if we take the ones we have that are edited down to the this tour, not the discussion, 
Mm -hmm. We could put that up as promotion for open studios. Yeah, that's what time. Joanne was saying. And we could get other people to do a 15 minute presentation. Right, which is a little bit like, so that's something we should talk uh, about also. Each year for um, open studio, the City Hall, Mike Miner does a video um, and either Kathy Talbot or Andre has interviewed three artists as a way to promote open studios. Um, we may see if they're interested if we're doing it in October, if they're interested in doing videos for that. Do we have a date for October? Maureen, you're late. Um, yep. It's tentative. <laughs> It's tentatively October 23rd and 24th, but it's not firmed up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a thought in terms of the um, Zoom video tours of studios. I think that they are great, but I wonder if anyone who's in PAA, and this is not me, but somebody else may be really good at using cameras and shooting um, you know, a studio tour because the artist isn't necessarily someone who's wants to be even that good at doing a studio tour. And I think if you put a studio tour up to uh, work as a hook, I think it's probably got to be um, rather professionally done. Um, it doesn't have to be like were super professional, but I, I think that it should be, you know, polished and clear and kind of smooth. And maybe there's someone in our group who's really good, probably a lot of people who are really good with doing that. And if somebody wants to have a studio tour, they could um, ask this person or, I don't know, hire this person to do the tour for them. Because I think the quality of the tours really needs to be as high as the quality of the art. The only problem with that, Suzanne, is that we've been doing these because of social distancing. Um, and so, I mean, I guess some people at this point in time would, would be comfortable inviting someone else into their studio or their home to do the videoing, but, videoing, but I still really limit who comes in and out of my house. Yeah, understandable, sure. Me too. And if I can respond to Suzanne, I totally agree with you. It's actually been something that's holding me back about doing anything I've done lately. But uh, from what Robin was saying before, before COVID, uh, Kathy and Michael, I think the photographer, uh, actually were in and they shot my area in promotion of the of open studios a couple of years ago. And it was totally professionally shot. Mm -hmm. So I totally agree with you. I think we should have like a film crew. But it costs money. Yes, right? yes, and that was that was. A and it, it can cost a lot of money to get it professionally done, and boy, I am getting so frustrated and tired of not being able to be an artist because I can't afford to spend the money on some of the promotion, like getting a professional videographer to tour to do my sh exhibitions right. or getting, I mean. Sometimes it's a question of, do I have the money to rent the car to deliver my artwork? I mean, there are all sorts of calls on us and sales don't often cover it. That's all. We should use Will's video. <laughs> that Mike uh, Miner. <laughs> I had one too. It's, it's, Rashi it's Newman point, had one too. It's dated. It's, no, I, no. <laughs> oh. Okay, does anyone have anything else? Do we have uh, member announcements or anything you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, well, there's um, a show coming up at the um, library, Mayor Pack Library. Um, it's called Telling Tales and it's tales of animals, you know, and birds and things. <laughs> and that's going to be I'm looking for the dates here. In July, I believe. And it's you can still submit if anyone's interested. Uh, let's see. May I pack? July 8th to the 14th. And um, 
Yeah, I've got a bunch of things coming up. There's a big show at the series gallery with my Women in the Arts Foundation. We're having our 50th anniversary celebration in the city and the series. And- um, Which is my gallery. Are you, oh, really? It's interesting. Well, anyway, um, the, um, they're gonna have some major, they're on loan, some, in addition to our work, Women in the Arts work, there will be some major, uh, well, they were once members who have gotten rather well known. And uh, sorry, the dog. Um, and and uh, so they're gonna be in the show. So it's gonna be a very interesting show. I also have, may have mentioned it before, I have um, a solo show at a museum in Cooperstown, New York. Um, and, um, oh God, I'm blocking out the name. <laughs> the name of the museum. Oh brother, that's bad. Anyway, um, it's in Cooperstown, so nobody's gonna go, but, it, but it's exciting. It's um, a, major, uh, a major museum. That's and, good. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. If only my mem Oh, Fenimore. Sure. <laughs> it would be nice if I had a memory to match uh, <laughs> the show. <laughs> but anyway, so I've got that coming up. A bunch of things here, but mostly not in the area except for the Mayapak one. So Inez and I are in the Highland Falls sculpture. It's called the Highland Falls Art Walk, which is open now. It'll be open through the last weekend in October, and there are 18 sculptors by 19 artists just out there on the streets and in a park. And mm -hmm. it's our, I think our fourth year that we've done it through Collaborative Concepts. And shortly, we'll be sending out the call for the next Collaborative Concepts at Tilly Foster Farm, which will be September to October at Tilly Foster Farm in Mayapack. And then I'm gonna be in a couple of shows in June, two shows in June in North Bennington, New York, uh, Vermont. Oh, that's nice. Well, a handful, a few of us um, in the PA are in the uh, Garrison Arts Center, Artquake. Um, mm. I have a piece in this show that runs, it runs through Saturday. Um, and Will Hanlon has two. Um, Joe, I'm, I'm going to say his last name wrong. Squilante. Squilante. I don't know if anyone. I'm trying to think of anyone else. Um, but that's that's a fun show. It's it's uh, it's kinetic and optical art. And then I also have a piece in Arts Westchester and some of the other. There's other PAA members as well that are in that show. Okay. I just had a piece accepted into a, it's an online show. It's not a brick and mortar, but with the Baltimore Watercolor Society. So that'll nice. be up from June through the end of August. Nice. Um, I guess on the Baltimore Watercolor Society mm -hmm. website. <laughs> That's nice, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Well, you? hopefully all of you will have a piece in uh, the Reemergence show, which is going to open at WCC in July. Uh, it's, a, it's a real life gallery show with live people coming in and looking at your art. So get get those pieces in. Right. It's yeah, June. Uh, when is June. it June? When June. Is June? Are you going to send out another blast? Because I didn't get anything about it. So yeah. Check it your uh, spam mail. See if it's in there. Check your spam. I yeah. checked my and go to the website. Email. I, I've checked promotions. I can't find it anywhere. <clears throat> go, then try go, go to, the to the website. website. Yeah. Go to the website. It's been sent out. Yeah. Got it. So, so when is this due? When it, when when it, do we have to submit? May 29th is the last day you can submit it. Okay, so okay. don't miss the deadline because we have to put the show together that weekend. And so yeah. can I ask a question about the uh, subject matter? Um, the emergence. Could that be like a bug emerging? It could be whatever you um, want it to be, whatever you think the interpretation is. Send it in. But remember, at WCC, it must be family friendly. Yeah. yeah thank you, Joanne. It, re, it re emerges. It's not something that emerges for the first time, like a newborn or something. Well, with such little lead time towards the submission for the show, 
uh, I hopefully the the selection committee will be a little bit open to whatever you send. Okay. Yeah, you know, go go through your art, find something nice, uh, not something not too old. Actually, you know, go through your art and find something that's just going to wow the audience. Not too. Think scary. about wow factor. Uh, who's the contact there, Lawrence? Uh, the contact is going to be a PA email. You just send it to there. And can you please not send emails to Robin? The emails go to the show email address. So this way I can stay on top of it and answer your questions. And where well, is it going to be? It's going to be at WCC, Westchester oh, Community WCC. College on North right. Division Street. Okay. The dates of it? What are the dates? Uh, it's on the prospectus. June 12th till July 21st. There you go. Is there a size limit? Yes, unfortunately, oh, we see. want to get well, it's I not see. unfortunately, we want to try and get as many as our members into the show as possible. So the biggest pieces we're going to take are 36 inches on any one side, but that also includes the frame. Gotcha. What yeah. about um, sculptures? Uh, sculptures, if you can supply your own white uh, pillar okay. to put it on, there's a good that chance you'll be in the show. I mean, they have, I think, two or three there. Yeah. You need a pedestal? Yeah, yeah, pedestal. That's the word I was looking for. OK. My, my understanding was that 36 was also going to be a limit. So it can't be either wider than 36 or longer than 36. Uh, that both. is correct. What do, you, what do you mean? Can the be greatest dimension in any submission to this show is 36 inches. So it can't on be longer any... and wider. You said it could be longer and wider on one on one dimension. No. It could be 36 inches as the largest of any of your dimensions. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Sounds good. In the prospectus. It's out there, Maureen. Uh, check your emails. We sent it out this no, afternoon. No, I'm, I'm saying yeah. to our dear members that it's all in the prospectus. Thank you. I yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. <laughs> yeah, hopefully everybody will um, submit uh, uh, some images and we'll put a together a really great show that will represent our organization. The emails from PAA? Uh, Robin, was the email from PA? It was from my president at Peekskill, pres, pres whatever it is at Gmail. Yeah. If you can't find it in your email, just go to the Pizza Arts the Alliance website. website. It's right there on the website. There. Okay, thank you. Uh, it came today at Joanne. 12 16. Oh, are you done, Aunt Lawrence? I, yeah. Uh, before I uh, prep my paint, my newest paintings to put in our show, I want you to know that I will be having a show with two other artists at the Pack Library uh, opening in June. It, before the one that Deborah had talked about, it's called Conversations. The other two artists are uh, Georgine Hanahan and Sharon Nakasato. And our show is called Conversations. And throughout this year during the pandemic, uh, we'll be showing some of our own work, but we also did collaborative work where we mailed to each other uh, the beginnings of something and they built, each of us built on, on it. And there are a lot of fun pieces that you'll be able to see. It's really uh, a lot, a lot of fun show, real fun. Is it show. up now? Is it up it now? Will, uh, it, it will be up in, in June for the oh. month of June. Um, so that's all prepared now, right now I'm working on getting uh, ready for our show. Good luck, Lawrence. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a it's going to be it's a really fun show. We had a great time. It was wonderful to mail during this pandemic time to receive mail from someone, and I was so excited I couldn't wait to see what they would show me. And boy, did they challenge me! Whoa, it's, <laughs> you know, uh, very it's cool. a lot of fun. You, there's a lot of I put a lot of red pieces in. They don't have too many, but I have <laughs> red. <laughs> Okay. Yes, Barbara. Yeah, hi. Um, a couple of months ago, Robin was kind enough to send around an e-blast about a, a nonprofit um, organization I'm starting that is uh, uh, concerned with creative reuse. And creative reuse is 
a concept of reducing waste from um, manufacturing and companies and also individuals collecting uh, donated supplies, art supplies, art making supplies, and then making them available for use by artists, teachers, crafters. Um, the general anchor of these kind of uh, organizations is a store that charges a very nominal fee for very um, post-consumer art, art supplies. And um, I, it's very interesting because I had lived in the city and then the pandemic, uh, we moved back out to Cortland Manor. So I connected with Peaks. I've always loved Peekskill. I lived in uh, Chappaqua before we had moved into the city and I had always come up to Peekskill because I thought it was such a funky, interesting town and went to, you know, we ate at Zeph's a lot and, uh, and did the whole up and down Division Street and the Salvation Army was always a great place. But anyway, uh, I have a sofa from Salvation Army still. Um, but anyway, so uh, looking around to open something like this, I thought Peekskill would be a great place. Um, of course, the pandemic has sort of changed the timeline, but I'm working with Felice Gittleman now to uh, launch this thing. Um, I've had really a lot of enthusiastic response from a lot of people. Kathy Talbot has been very instrumental in connecting me to Louis Lanza. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to partner, we're trying to partner with um, Wilfredo and uh, Art 101566 and see if we can uh, get him free supplies for his program. I'm trying to contact Rizwan uh, Foxhall at New Era Creative yeah. Space. So while I wait for my 501c3 to come about, hopefully it comes about because I actually have a startup grant um, lined up, but I have to be a 501c3. So um, while I'm doing that, I've decided to try to partner with established art organizations, uh, Field Library, um, how yeah. about the Peak School Creative Arts Camp? Well, that's, I would love to know what that's, that is because- Talk to me, I run it. Okay, I will, I will. So anyway, we're starting, we're starting by providing free supplies to organizations who, who uh, need them to teach. And I have to say, the, um, one of the goals is to help Westchester manufacturers identify materials that they are throwing away that could be used for creative art expression. And everybody has been on board with it. I'm picking up at a local fr a framer in Katona. He's saving me all his mat board and his foam core and his, and his plexi. And I have several upholsters who I pick up every week. And the amount of stuff that they throw out is mind boggling. And um, I, I'm really enthusiastic about uh, getting getting some place in line um, that that I can receive you know donations from individuals too because I know a lot of people responded to the e-blast um, saying I have lots of things I'd like to give you um, so I'm, I'm just wanted to tell you that it, it is going forward and I, I'm just kind of getting my footing in um, in peak skill I've talked to Carla Ray Johnson I've talked to Scarlett Antonia and I really feel very welcome here. It's it's uh, is, is, it's great. Is that like with New York City? Because when I had my pickup truck, I would always I'd go there for the, and the, it was open to the DOE. Right. Um, I was actually on the board warehouse, and I mean you, you pick from. I mean it, it was. I worked at material. Yeah, I work, I was at Materials for the Arts for twelve years before yeah, that's the the um, place run by the city it's actually funded by the city the department of cultural affairs education and sanitation so they have no funding problems and it's a huge it's thirty-five thousand square feet in long island city so that's really you have, been, you yeah, have to be a not-for-profit to get in I had to be a not-for-profit or a public school teacher in the five boroughs in the so, five boroughs yes yeah. Yeah. So that was that was limiting, and I didn't like that because individual yeah. artists could not come in and get the supplies. Right. And I, Absolutely. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember getting that e blast, but you know. Okay. Well, it went out, and um, I will uh, send around my uh, website 
if uh, if anyone's interested. But Thanks I just so wanted much. to tell you what a great community this is in terms of people uh, wanting this to happen. And I really want it to happen too. I, I ha I'm looking for a space, so. If, if I get a hold of Louie Lanza first, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, welcome. We welcome you. Thank you very much. It sounds great. So this will be a nonprofit kind of thing or? Yes, yes. It's totally uh, to, for the benefit of uh, environmental, uh, eco-consuming and community education in creative reuse. Wonderful. But what's so nice about it is that recycled artwork has become very popular. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and really nice, nice artwork. Yeah. Um, I just want to add that, um, you know, the, the other thing that excites me about uh, this project is the notion uh, with all this, you know, art supply stores that have no longer exist in Westchester, um, and that and what is available is quite limited. That um, it gives us the chance to have some really unusual things for, as donations that could spur, you know, creativity, which excites me really very much. So. And, and it could really add to our the profile of peak skill. To, to, yeah. uh, to show some of the things that w are going on here. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's a way of uh, PR for the environment, you know? Yeah, it, and it's, it's a really fun concept. And uh, since I have all of you here, I actually have something I'm trying to get rid of. And that is a printer went out of business and I have rolls of Canon resin coated paper, 60 inches by hundred feet. Oh I have lot. If anybody wants a big roll of paper, um, please, please uh, email or... me because I want I, it. I want it. I okay, want it. Joanna. Okay. <laughs> I will bring it over. It's amazing stuff. It would be amazing for outdoor murals. Unfortunately, because it's resin coated, it's not recyclable. But my, my feeling is if I can get it one more use before it hits the dumpster, then I've succeeded. So <laughs> If anybody, I don't uh, need it all, but Camp would love it. Okay, good, good. Hey, you Barbara, have as much as you want. <laughs> Barbara, if we're putting into orders, do you have like push pins, paper clips, and copper <laughs> wire? <laughs> no, but well, I have a feeling that once this gets going, uh, people are hungry to contribute things like that. And I know your work. Uh, I can get. I'll probably be able to get you a lot of multiples of something. So Yay. yeah, great. I only shop at Staples, what can I say? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? What size is the paper? It's 60 inches by 100 feet. But I also have smaller rolls. I have 40 by 100, too. <laughs> yeah, I might want to do some large drawings. That might be great. Absolutely. I will, I will get in touch. You'll with have you. to talk to Joanne. Yeah. yeah, Joanne will be my. Uh, I don't want to fight with Joanne. <laughs> yeah, not. You better watch yourself. <laughs> Barbara will share. Oh, Joanne. Hey, wonderful. wait, I want some of that too. All right. Good. I'm glad. I'm, it's in my garage. Yeah, yeah. Remember, okay. I don't draw. Yeah. It's not for me. <laughs> okay. It'd be great for your camp, Joanne, when that's what she does. Your camp, yeah. Yeah, that's what, well, camp is going and it's going to be in person. Really? And okay. we have a horrible problem. Okay. We can't meet at Oakside this year. So we have to be at Woodside and Woodside is air conditioned. Yes. Do you oh, know what it's like to teach in the summer inside? No. Oh. <laughs> I've done it for 20 years. <laughs> Terrible. I had a car with broken air conditioning for years, so I know what it feels like. <laughs> not anymore. It's not yeah. losing your cool with the kids. Yeah. Mm. When you can't cope with the heat. Yeah. Right. Look, the board has ended. Many, many classrooms in June, at the end of June, they can have some really rough days, rough, sticky days. Well, they actually will close if it gets to a certain temperature. <laughs> I never remember them closing for the heat, never. 
my daughter teaches at a school in the Bronx, and if it gets over a certain temperature, they will close. That must be something new. Well, you never yeah. remember that happening. Before. I know they close it when it's too cold and have no heat. <laughs> when it's hot. Okay, so everyone has to remember to submit their art for the show um, by May 29th. And we want people to respond to the poll for open studios. Well, I have to send one first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody. Will say they didn't get, but <laughs> Robin. Bye -bye. So I think we're done. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Robin. Covered a lot of ground. Bye, Have a good night. And uh, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 you. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.